Good morning, everyone. Say, uh, there's been a lot of videos out there that, uh, well, there hasn't been a lot of videos. There's been, I've been dying for videos for, uh, that, that show you how to take apart, uh, iClear 30 and, uh, iClear 30 Pink, and there's practically none out there. There's a very good gentleman, uh, French gentleman that made one and uh, very detailed to the point however he spoke French and I don't so this will this will help you I apologize for the video quality by the way um, I apparently haven't bought a <laughs> webcam since 84 so um, what you'll see here is your typical iClear 30 uh, atomizer coil so what you're first going to do is, if you look towards the bottom there, you will see your typical bottom. If you look right at the very top there, you'll see a tip. Okay, and what we're going to do is, what I found is, if you go by a pick, okay, very similar to this, this is going to be your best, you know, proper thing to get this taken out. Now, what you're going to do is take your pick here and right towards the flat head of the bottom portion you're going to go ahead and insert it out nice basically pull on there of course if I'm not looking at it okay so what you're going to do is basically work it right out of there okay and what you'll see is if you if I can adjust the camera there, okay. See towards uh, basically how it's coming out. What you're gonna do? Pull the pin out. You can. I've already basically give it a little jimmy. And what you can see here in my right hand is the actual piece that's gonna fit right back in the um, coil right after you're done with it. So this is basically what holds all the coils in. So and what you're gonna do with this? with all your coils. These are the silicon wick coils standard on the OEM tanks. You're gonna basically um, pull these out. So you you don't need these anymore, obviously, because we're rebuilding it. And what I am doing right now is checking to see, and yep, there is a coil that got left behind. So what I'm gonna do is take my pick tool Take the remaining of the coil out, so therefore we don't have a double coil problem. Okay, right here you have your empty empty coil tank essentially. Um, what you're going to do, set this aside, okay, and uh, what I'm using is uh, I'm using hemp. This is 1.5 millimeter hemp wick. I just want to let everyone know that everyone who's used to burning the silica wick, um, you cannot dry burn these. You dry burn these, it's really simple. Um, you're going to spend about 10 minutes on a coil that's basically going to start on fire. So, um, haven't read up on basically on the hemp if uh, how to clean it so on etc uh, someone knows how to please let me know please leave your comments below um, that would be very very helpful but uh, here's here's a wire if you can see it god I think you can see it that is a 34 gauge canthal wire uh, heat wire and what we're gonna do is this is a 1.5 1.5 millimeter hemp wick and then this is 34 gauge canthanol. And what we're going to do is we're going to do eight wraps. Okay. So what we're going to do, take the uh, take the wire. And we're going to wrap it. Dual coil means double the fun. So you're going to have to do this twice. Now while you're doing this, what I would recommend is that you do not press on the wire too hard. Um, you have to remember the hemp is basically wicking into the coil. You 
do the threads real tight, real simple. Um, threads aren't going to be allowed to breathe and therefore not allowing it to wick. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll go seven on this. Okay, and gosh, you know, this lens is horrible. Okay, if you can see that, that's the wrap. Okay, there's quite some space in there. So what I usually do is take take a nail. Um, the wick, uh, wick pick works very well. That little tool that I just used to, uh, it's not a wick pick, it's a pick. To take the coils out and remove the base, that also works very good. Um, you can basically, if you work your fingers into it, get this squeezed down so it looks just like this, okay? On your left, that's actually going to be on your right. On your right is going to be your positive. And then on your left is going to be your negative. So what I'm going to do, set this one aside. Okay, this one's done. So what we're going to do is set this one aside. We're going to do the other one. Okay, 1.5 millimeter uh, wick hemp. Again, what I'd like to do is if you haven't seen right now, is I like to um, basically use a wire, fold it over, and then take another wire, fold it over. So you got 1.5, 1.5 going to be one millimeter so equals out that you're basically making a two millimeter wick um, I haven't really tried bigger wicks yet they're on order uh, what I mean by the bigger wicks is the one millimeters uh, the iClear 30 I'm pretty sure after I put that one millimeter in there it's not going to be able to fit into the notches of the tank so Got my wire here. I pre-cut these before I recorded. So, uh, 34 gauge cantonal. Again, gonna wrap it around. We're gonna do seven times. Now, the amount of times that you wrap it is how many ohms that you're gonna get physically on the tank. For those of you who have done your research, um, I've hooked up a gauge after seven wraps off of two millimeters and it's ended up being right around 2.4, 2.5, which uh, I found out on the batteries uh, on the ITACE. If you uh, go over the three ohms mesh, I'm sorry, the three ohms mark, it uh, the battery doesn't like to ignite the tank anymore. So just... Uh, Make sure you stay within the wrap range, and then also with the hemp, it will, I mean, regardless whether you have juice or not, it will burn the hemp pretty bad. So, and then you'll be burning, <coughs> you'll be burning hemp. Um, <laughs> the taste isn't that bad from my experience of it, but uh, you get the idea. Okay, again, taking the wire, I've already wrapped this seven times now, okay? I'm just taking the wire, moving it closer. I'm just moving it closer so it's going to fit in the tank. Okay, so your left side when you build these is going to be your negative and your right side is going to be your positive. So positives, let's keep in mind when they go inside the tank here, positives go straight down into the hole. What I mean by the hole is at your bottom hole, okay? So all your positives are going to go down into the bottom hole, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one, we're going to use this one first, okay? This one is going to be one of our, one of our, 
wicks on the dual wick. So um, one of the pain in the butt things that I have found is trying to get these right back in the bottom of it. So what we're going to do, and of course while I'm recording it, wow, okay, first shot. Okay, as you can see, it's through the bottom there. What we're going to do is pull it through. I found when you just let this one dangle a little bit and just allow uh, for yourself to put the, uh, the second one in there, that makes life a little bit easier. So we're going to set that down. Okay, we're going to get our second wick here that we've made. And we're going to go ahead and insert that through the bottom as well. Okay, top to bottom. Okay, second one's through. We're gonna pull it through. Okay, now what I would just like to tell all the viewers out there, um, just be very careful. I found if you cross the wires, um, it's not gonna shore anything out. However, it's not gonna fire, okay? So just bear with me one second. I'm gonna try to um, load the first one in here so it uh, fires properly. So we have a good success. So what I'm gonna do is take the first wick here. You can tell by the notches, okay? The notches on the physical coil, coil base, okay? Your longer one, which is this one, that's, your, that's gonna be your first wick, obviously. And then your smaller one, which is gonna be right there, okay? It's gonna be your top. So what we're gonna do is put the bottom one in first and again, make sure that the positive wires don't cross each other or touch. From my experience, if someone has found this to be false, let me know. <laughs> I am wrong, it happens. Okay, now your negative wire, okay? It's first wicks in, believe it or not. Now, what I'm gonna do is take the negative wire and see right at the top here, I'm gonna wrap it right around one of these notches here, okay? One of these notches right up here, I'm just gonna basically wrap it around that little post right there, okay? And again, not touching any of the wires, just gonna do a small little, just twist. I'm gonna do two of these. And what I'm gonna do now is leave that one alone. We're not gonna do any of the cutting of the wires yet. I found out that uh, we tend to run into problems after we do that. Now we're gonna insert the second coil into the notch at the very top. So what we're gonna do is feed it right through the top here. Actually, I'm going to refeed this back in here. Um, I can already see the wires touching. So let me uh, let me pull this back through the bottom. I already pulled it out. I pulled the positive out. So I already saw a problem. I just don't want to have any problems for your viewers.
Okay, so I basically am pulling through to the bottom, which I did the, the positive wire on the second wick. Um, I saw the wires touching, so I basically stopped because obviously it was going to misfire. Okay, so um, top wick right there. Now what I'm going to do is wrap it around this post, the negative wire. Okay, sorry about that guys, the camera went out. So, um, okay, so again, putting on the top uh, two positives down already in the hole, and then we're uh, wiring our negative to fit on this post right here. Okay, again, So drop your coil, I'm sorry, drop your coil, drop your wick, all the way down into the base. Okay, that looks really good. Just gonna do a couple fine tunes here to make sure any of the wires are touching. On the negatives to the post to make sure we're not touching any coils. Okay, perfect. Now, if you can look down inside of there, again, I, I'm so sorry about the lens here. Here, let's, uh, Okay, that's it. That's there, the two coils, you can't even see them. There you go, well you can kind of see that. And then what I did is I wrapped the negative wires on this end and also on this end on the polar opposites, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wire cutters and clip the excess off. Okay, excess is cut off. Now, what we need to do now is uh, focus on uh, the positive ends. Okay, and positive ends, really simple actually. So, honestly, it's uh, just the negatives that cause the headache. So, on the bottom, as you can see, you have uh, two wires there coming out. What I like to do is, just like now, I like to spread them apart. Okay. So just take them, spread them apart because we don't want both of them touching. I found to have issues firing later if they're touching. And I love it, of course, when I'm filming this. And the threads pops out. So again, negatives are the most tedious. I just had a negative pop out. Two negatives pop out, that is. Um, let me shut the camera off, correct these, I'll come right back. Okay guys, and we're back. I'm so sorry, the top wick uh, wasn't cooperating correctly. Um, so what we have there are uh, the two two wires, if you can see them, and uh, they're basically separated uh, from top to bottom. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that uh, 
little piston we took out earlier, if I can find it. Okay, this guy, and we're gonna put it in there. Okay, right through the middle, and then just make sure the wires stay separated, okay, from top to bottom, just like that. Okay, so when you're inserting this, just insert it, just like the bottom through, so just like I'm doing. Better yet, take the pick. Okay, and I just basically go right through the bottom. Okay, so now you're going to have two wires that are coming out of the bottom of it. This is your cantonal wires. These are your two positives. And what you can do is just bring them over. Just like this. And I take a um, wire cutters, clip these off, close as I can to the base of it. Okay, wires are off. Now we got an original looking bottom. Okay, just like before. Then let's uh, go ahead and check our tops here. Our negatives. Negatives look good. Found out I never clipped a wire. So let's make sure that wire is secure. and then clip it off. Just doing a little bit of house cleaning here. Okay, so what I'll show you is we got our two, okay, you got your bottom coil, you got your top coil, all right? And right on the notches there, I'm going to try to get one where you can see. Okay, if you can see right there, see the wire, it is wrapped around the, one of the posts, all right? And then the other side, what I basically did is kitty cornered it. So you got two two negatives and then you got the two positives down at the bottom with the little piston down there okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out the excess mesh excess mesh excess wick all right that's gone now basically what it looks like is an iClear 30 tank. All right, well, tank, it, it looks like a coil, basically. So uh, there's your finished product. What I like to do is bring out this, screw it on here. I've made bad coils, believe it or not. I'll just make mistakes. So really easy. we get a green button and it starts to fire stop it immediately again you dry burn it you're gonna burn your hemp you burn your hemp you're done so you're gonna have to do this process all over again so and I got a little click off of it which is good and uh, looks like we're good so um, one thing I wanted to tell you guys is that uh, at first if you're burning the hemp that I found, um, you're going to want to soak this in water for a good uh, four to six hours. So that takes the mostly partially of the hemp taste out and um, let them dry, dry out a little bit right after you water them. Um, you can smoke it immediately, but you're just going to get a couple, you know, wet hits off of it. So uh, other than that, that's how you uh, rebuild your tank. All right. Cheers. Good luck.